Welcome back. Do we really know how our code works? Well, we do know that once we compile our code, it turns into machine code. But there's a little bit more to that. Oftentimes, we don't really think about passing arguments to functions, getting values back, and many other things. But we know that the machine code is defined by the architecture, right? The ARM machine code is different from x86, MIPS, PowerPC. But what about another thing? Now, you might be asking, what is this other thing? Well, this other thing is called the ABI. And no, I didn't spell API wrong. It's ABI, Application Binary Interface. And defining the ABI, I can give you a definition for the ABI. Standard that defines the interface between compiled code, such as libraries and user programs. Now, this doesn't really help. I could even add a diagram in here, and it's not really going to help, is it? Well, let's really go into what an ABI defines. The main point of this video is to talk about how arguments are passed and how values are returned. Everything else is out of the scope of this video, and an ABI does define that, and this includes stack alignment, all that other stuff, and there's, there's more stuff. I, it's just not on the top of my head right now. But again, to be more specific, when we think of API, for example, let's think of the C standard library, if we write some, like a core util, right, we write the cat command, and we compile it, and we copy that source code over to another Unix-like operating system. Let's say we wrote it on Linux, and we copy it over to uh, another Unix-like operating system, assuming we our code is POSIX compliant, we're not using any uh, system-specific code, it should compile flawlessly, it should no problems. That is API-level compatibility or source-level compatibility. When we're able to copy the executable itself, the, the machine code from one machine to another, that's when we have ABI level compatibility. And ABI level compatibility is something that needs to be maintained because if the ABI changes and one day you start running your code and everything will just crumble. Now this video isn't for everybody and that might seem a little bit weird, but mostly because the ABI we're gonna be talking about is the System 5 ABI. So really, we're only talking about Linux users and Mac OS users and other operating systems too, but these are the two most popular. On the x86 64-bit architecture, meaning either you have an Intel or AMD system. Now, what about Apple Silicon? A lot of people are on Apple Silicon. Funny enough, I'm actually recording this video on Apple Silicon. What can you do to follow along with this video? Well, since the tooling on macOS generally uses the Clang compiler, we can actually do cross compilation. So we can do hyphen arch x86 64. And when we try to run the program after compiling it, Rosetta on Mac will take over and translate the machine code. You will have no problems. I have tested it. If my code's not wrong, I hope it's not. But let's get started. So we have our little function here. And if you take a look at its assembly, well, it, we can see some things, right? Funk, funk, colon. Ignoring the first two lines of assembly, push RBP, move RBP, RSP, pop RBP, these are the function prolog and epilog respectively. But what we really want to look at is this specific instruction move EAX zero. This, in assembly, moves the value zero into EAX. And I know some assembly nerds are gonna be like, well, you can do XOR, but um, this is just the output that Compiler Explorer gave me. I'm sure if I optimize it, it would be XOR, but for simplicity's sake, we move the value zero into EAX. This directly corresponds with the return zero statement in C. Well, not directly, the return statement also has the move EAX0 statement, including the ret instruction from before. Now, why EAX? How do these even correspond? Well, let's go back to the ABI. The System 5 ABI states that the RAX register 
stores the return value. And there's more to this, but for now, the RAX value stores the return value. Well, if you're familiar with x86 64-bit assembly, you know that RAX is the 64-bit register. EAX is just the 32-bit half of the RAX register. So effectively, it's the same register, it's just the lower 32 bits. So EAX corresponds to RAX, just the bottom 32 bits. Now, I know I've said that and I've shown you code, but how about let's write our own example and see it in action. Let's start off with this C code. We're gonna include the standard IO library and we're gonna define an extern function called from ASM, take the value of it and store it into A and then print that same value out. Now, this is where the differences between macOS and Linux come into play. Very minor differences. It's just on macOS, you wanna prefix the functions with underscore and on Linux, you don't need to do that. And notice how the function name is the same in C. This is referring to the from ASM function we did the extern for. And here we move the value of one, two, three, four into EAX and return from the function, effectively returning one, two, three, four. On macOS, we'll compile like this, Arch x86-64 for people on um, Apple Silicon. If you're not on Apple Silicon, you don't really need to worry about that. And on Linux, it's practically the same thing. Just remove the Arch. And CC is probably going to point to GCC. And on Mac, is going to point to um, Clang. And running the program will give us 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, again, why? If you remember, we move the value 1, 2, 3, 4 into the EAX register, effectively returning 1, 2, 3, 4. Now let's go on to more code. And I know that on the right side looks like hell to read, but we're gonna ignore most of it. What we need to really understand is what we're doing in this code. We're calling mult with the arguments one, two, three. Now, well, why is that significant, first of all? Well, we're passing in arguments. And if you remember before, the ABI defines how arguments are passed. Not only just values are returned, but arguments are passed. More specifically, these lines of code. If you notice, the same registers are being used. If we highlight them, you notice when we did one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, we move them into EDI, ESI, EDX. Now, why these specific registers? We come back to the ABI once more. The ABI states that the return value from before should be in RAX, and the, the arguments should be in RDI, RSI, RDX, RCX, R8, and R9, the first six arguments. What if I have more than six arguments? Well, uh, I don't want to read your code. Okay, I'm joking, but seriously, I'm not going to go over that. Generally, they're put on the stack. You can look up the System 5 ABI. More, more specifically, look up the sys, type in SysV ABI OS dev. On the OS dev wiki, there's a very good um, TLDR for the System 5 ABI, also for 32-bit systems, if you're interested. But for now, we're only really going to worry about the first six, maybe not even the first six, more like the first three. But if you still don't believe me, which uh, I don't know why you wouldn't, but these correspond to those registers. Again, the EAX just means the 32-bit half of that RDX register. And I've also appropriately, appropriately passed in one, two, three, so it's easier to know which one's which argument. Once again, let's write some code. We've seen the code, but how about let's like take the arguments from C and do our own little assembly instructions with it. So let's make our function, extern int add. This will return an int and we will pass in the values A, B, C. And we will print the values returned. Assuming this function works the way it's written, it should return the value six because one plus two plus three is six. Again, Mac OS and Linux are slightly different. It is just a matter of the underscore on the function. Now, what does this code really do? Well, we move into EAX, the first register, 
which is an EDI, like I said before, in the System 5 AVI. And then we add the value of ESI into EAX, effectively making the value in EAX 3, because before, EDI has a value of 1, ESI has a value of 2, EDX has a value of 3. So if we move it into EAX, we have 1 in EAX. If we add 2 into EAX, we get 3. And finally, when we add the last number, which is 3, in EAX, we get 6. And we just do return because the value is already in EAX. So we don't need to worry about that. Compiling once again, same way as before. Once we run the function, we get v is equal to 6. Now we've called assembly from C, but how about us calling C from assembly? Here's where the differences between macOS and Linux kind of start to show up a little bit more. On the bottom we do, on the comment, it says exit the program, and we do something kind of different, right? EAX, all that stuff. For now, you don't need to worry about that. I will go over system calls in a later video, but for now, just copy that. And if you're interested, you could always Google it. But effectively, it's like the underscore exit call within C. RAX has the system call number and RDI has the status code we return, which is zero and we perform syscall, effectively exiting the program. Ignoring that bottom portion, let's focus on the one above. Very similar, but the difference on Linux is that the entry point to a program is underscore start. And on Mac, it's underscore main. This took me actually a while to figure out on Mac OS because for some reason, every time I Googled it, it just did not pop up until I found it in some like random tutorial on how to write assembly for Mac. So this basically makes our program and calls our C function from before. Actually, not before, after. I'll, I'll show you what the function looks like. But again, it accepts three arguments into RDI, RSI, RDX, 10, 20, 30. And now we accept a long because we're using RDI, so it's a full 64 bits. So we use long here instead. So we define this function, void func, long a, long b, long c, and we print out all those arguments. On macOS, we do this. Very similar, but we do hyphen no start files. This is so whenever you compile a C program, uh, the compiler automatically links in these files called, these object files called the CRT. And that's where underscore start is defined. So whenever your um, main function is, that's actually not where the program starts. It starts elsewhere. It does a bunch of setup and then it calls the main function. No start files just ignores all of that. So we can go to, to our own start function, the underscore main or the underscore start, depending on if you're on Mac or Linux. And on Linux, it's very similar. We just remove the underscore arch x86-64. And here we run the program and we get 10, 20, and 30, the same way we passed in the arguments from before. And let's actually go back to take a look. We pass in 10, 20, and 30. That's it for this video. And um, I'm sorry if I didn't go over everything, but I really wanted to make this video so people can understand what your C code really compiles down to. And it's more than just machine code. It's all these standards that we've made, not we've made, not me, but many other people much smarter than me have made, just so our things stay stable. And before I actually end the video, I wanted to give you guys a question to ponder over. One day, let's say in the near future, Linux says, what we're going to do is that instead all of our tooling, all of our compilers, everything, the whole world agrees that we're gonna move the first parameter instead of R into RDI, it's gonna be into R11. What's gonna happen? Think about it for a second. Well, actually, I'm just gonna give you the answer. All hell breaks loose because all of our compiled code moves the first argument into the RDI register. Suddenly, if you change that, everything breaks. That's why ABIs are so important. It makes it so that I, somebody on Linux x86-64, can copy my program and, okay, most of the time, it'll work. If there's problems, it's usually between like system libraries and stuff. But if I write the assembly like this and I just purely invoke system calls, it should work 
flawlessly. Abrupt cut, but I do want to make a correction in my video. Well, it's not really a, I would say it's a correction, but when I refer to the ABI, I'm referring to the native systems ABI, which in this case, we're referring to the system five ABI. Technically, you could write your own programming language and your compiler can output to different registers, right? For example, you can make RAX the register where you want to pass your first argument instead of RDI. You can do this, but this is okay as long as the calling function, the, the call, the call E is aware of that. So for example, you couldn't write your own compiler with your own ABI and call a C function because the C function uh, expects the native systems ABI, which in this case is system five. So theoretically, yes, you could create your own ABI and do your own thing within your the confines of your own programming language. But the second you want to call something from C, let's say the malloc function from the C standard library, you will have to obey the system five ABI or whatever ABI is on your system or the ABI of your system. I wanted to make that very clear because I don't want people to think that this is something that's baked into the machine code or something like that. No, no, no. This is just a standard that people have made. And when I say all hell will break loose, I mean that, let's say a function that you call from, let's say you call malloc and the ABI change. Now you're passing in the size into RDI and then the call the malloc function is expecting it in RAX and ends up allocating some garbage value in RDI. That's what I'm saying that all hell will break loose when if the, a, the ABI isn't stable. But technically you could write your own ABI as long as everything is in accordance. This is why ABIs are so important and their stability is very important. A lot of people talk about this and this ABI is what keeps our world turning, basically. And now you understand how arguments are passed, how values are returned, and how everything kind of works. And I said before I would go over system calls, and that's going to be my next video. I'm going to go over system calls on both Mac and Linux. Um, primarily, the difference isn't going to be much, but I'm going to go over why syscalls exist and um, their calling convention and how everything kind of just works and how a lot of the C functions are just wrappers over these system calls. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know if I made any mistakes in my code. I did verify it, but again, sometimes I make mistakes, especially today. I've not really been completely focused today. But um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, leave a comment down below giving me suggestions. Maybe I got something wrong. Um, please let me know. I would love to correct myself and make sure my videos are informative and correct. And also suggest more content to make videos on. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.